The majority of these books are 5 out of 5 stars, but I think there are a few of them that are 4.5 out of 5 stars, but regardless, these are my favorites of 2023. Sweet angels, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my top books of 2023. Yes, you heard that correctly. You read that correctly. Is it August 2024 at the time that I'm filming this? Yes, it is. Um, but as I said in the last three videos, your girl is not in the right headspace to film any of those end of the year wrap up videos. So it's coming to you now, better late than never, as I always say. So without further ado, let us get started. So coming in at number 10 is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. This is one that I did give a 4.5 out of 5 stars, but I absolutely adored this story. I can't really give too much of a synopsis since it is a sequel, but it follows a girl named Evangeline Fox who is in love with this man who ends up doing some very mean things to her. She ends up making a deal with the Prince of Hearts for his help and chaos ensues after that. I personally I'm just a sucker for complicated relationships and I cannot get enough of Evangeline and Jax. I just eat up their entire being. They have such a will-they-won't-they they relationship in this and I am a sucker for the way that he calls her Little Fox. Jax is one of my all-time favorite villains that I've ever read about. He never claims to be anything but a villain. The last 50 pages of this absolutely gutted me and I could not wait until the last book came out which, spoiler alert for 2024, I absolutely devoured, loved it so much, but this is coming in at number 10. Definitely think you should pick up the series as a whole because it is so addictive. Next, coming in at number 9, I have Mixed Signals by BK Borison, and this is another one that was a 4.5 out of 5 stars, but still obsessed with it nonetheless. So this follows a girl named Layla who has very, very bad luck in dating. She always chooses the worst men. Then Caleb, a regular at her bakery, is having a a birthday party for one of his family members at the restaurant of her latest bad date. So he swoops in and he proposes to her that they should start fake dating so that they can both learn from each other for the real thing. But as the month progresses, they obviously have undeniable chemistry and it's kind of the story of that. This is the third book in the Love Light Farms series. I have not read the first two books, but after this I am dying to get my hands on them. This is definitely able to be read as a standalone so if you haven't read the first two books don't worry about it but it definitely does have cameos from the first two books as far as I am aware. This gives off such Hallmark movie vibes I could not get enough of it. This book made me realize that although I really do love the grumpy ex sunshine trope I also really love the sunshine ex sunshine trope. These two characters are just little balls of sunshine and I loved them so much. The main character Caleb really reminds me of my boyfriend, which is why I think I loved this so much. He is just such a little cinnamon roll and a complete consent king, which we love to see. He's just honestly giving like golden retriever in a human body to the max and I want more of him. This is definitely a slow burn romance, so if you're wanting them to jump each other's bones right away, it's not gonna happen, but it is worth the wait. They are so sweet together and the mutual pining is just... I ate it up. I loved every second of it. I do remember retracting half a star because of the third act breakup. I just, it was pointless. There was no reason for it. You should have just let them be happy together. The epilogue though, so cute. Love the ending. Wonderful. Wonderful. Coming in at number nine. The next book I have coming in at number eight is one of my friends Molly Lakovich's books. It's called Send in the Clown. For some reason, I don't have a copy of this. I, I have a whole shelf dedicated to Molly and I, I don't have this book. I don't know why. I need to fix that problem, but this I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. It is about a girl named Bunny Reed who one night attends a circus with her roommate. This changes her entire life when three clowns at the circus, Alex, Eddie, and Spencer, take a special interest in her. Honestly, at this point, we should just assume that everything Molly writes is going to end up on my favorites list. I just think she is such a talented writer, and I'm not just saying that because she's my friend. She just truly writes some very unique stories. Every single one of her characters are so witty and funny and none of them are particularly likable but 
I love every single one of them. I can't help but root for them, like even if they are serial killer clowns. She also has a way of discussing more deeper topics in a way that is easily digestible, even if they are some very dark topics. This one in particular focuses a lot on trauma and how that affects different people. It not only pulls on your heartstrings, but makes you deeply resonate with these characters. As always with a Molly book, The Spice is Spicing, I definitely recommend that you pick up this book because I do think it is very, very underrated and I highly recommend that you send in the clowns. Next up coming in at number seven is Forget Me Not by Allison Derrick. We're now getting into the all the five out of five stars, so I'm gonna stop saying that I rated it a five out of five stars. This one follows Stevie and Nora, and they have been secretly dating for the past two years. They're planning on running away to California together, but then Stevie has a terrible accent which causes her to forget the last two years of her life, including her relationship with Nora. Obviously, Nora is devastated, and she decides that she's going to stop at nothing to get Stevie to remember her. This book made me cry, and I am not a crier. I don't cry at books, but I sobbed. Honestly, the only other author who has ever made me sob at a book is Taylor Jenkins Reid, so I'm just saying. I'm a cold, heartless bitch, but this, this got me. I cared so deeply for these two characters. They are so sweet, and I love watching Stevie fall for Nora again and how patient Nora was with her. I just love how Nora never gave up on Stevie and she knew in her heart that she could win her back. I highly recommend this, but definitely have your Kleenex ready. That's all I'm gonna say. Next up, coming in at number six is Her Good Side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This follows 16-year-old Bethany Green, who has never had a boyfriend, let alone been kissed by one. When Bethany is turned down for her school homecoming dance, she reluctantly agrees to go with her best friend's new boyfriend, Jake. Jacob. When Sailor unexpectedly breaks up with Jacob, he starts to wonder if maybe there's something wrong with him, so he proposes to Bethany to fake date so that they can learn from their experiences together. And obviously, as fake dating tropes go, they start to spend more time together, they realize that they have a lot of chemistry, and they might have some feelings for each other that aren't so fake after all. It's told in dual point of view of Jacob and Bethany, and I love being inside both of their heads. I do think that they went through so much growth, not only together, but individually as people as well. This is another one that is a very slow burn romance because Jacob is dating Sailor for the majority of the book, but I loved how Jacob and Bethany cared for each other, first as friends, but then as something more. The banter between these two was so well done, and I loved how they were kind of little cheerleaders for each other's hopes and dreams. Also, major fan of Bethany's moms. They were so fun and supportive and just amazing characters. Bethany is also a plus size character and she was so unabashedly herself when it came to her curves. She was not gonna let anybody tell her how to be, what to look like, especially when it came to her passion for food and I absolutely loved that part of the story. Okay, we are now coming to our top five of 2023. Coming in at number five is High Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. So this one follows Bradley and Celine. They used to be best friends, but now they are sworn enemies. They both enter a wilderness survival competition where the grand prize is a scholarship to the college of their choice, and they start to spend more time together and they realize that maybe they aren't enemies after all. This was actually my first Talia Hibbert book and I really loved her writing style. I definitely want to check out more of her books. I absolutely adore adored these characters. They were so much fun to follow and they did feel like real people. They were just so relatable. Like I said before, we love a grumpy sunshine trope and then throw in a friends to enemies to friends to enemies to friends to lovers trope and I am sold. I also just loved the banter between these two. This one also follows some more deeper topics such as OCD which Bradley has and it was handled in such an amazing way. And then we also get Celine's journey to self-discovery and her realization that she's more than just her accomplishments and her father's abandonment. And the side characters were just so amazing. I really hope that we get like a spin-off 
of the side characters because honestly I just want more of Brad and Celine and these characters. Coming so. in at number four is Ever Since by Elena Burez. So this book follows Virginia. She is a teen girl who has rumors following her everywhere she goes all about how promiscuous she is and how easy she is. When her best friend Poppy goes away for the summer she starts hanging out with Poppy's boyfriend Rumi. Breaking away from her norm she does not sleep with him in respect for Poppy but as she spends more time with him she she starts to realize that she might be falling in love with him. As she grows closer with Rumi, she starts spending more time with his younger sister, Lyra, who starts telling her about a special friend that she has. As Lyra starts confiding in her more, she starts to realize that the similarities to what happened to her and Lyra's special friend are a little bit close to home, so she has to decide what she's going to do. This book was probably the toughest book that I read in 2023. It covers some very deep topics, such as sexual abuse, grooming, addiction, and suicide ideation. The trauma that Virginia went through and had to relive in order to help Lyra was so heartbreaking and hard to read about. I know that Virginia was supposed to be a very unlikable character, but you cannot help but want to comfort her and hug her. She just felt like such a real person and it was very hard to watch her turn to alcohol and sex to try to cope with the trauma that happened. I really loved how this showed that sexual abuse can affect not only the person it happened to, but literally everybody around them and how the trauma from that can last an entire lifetime and affect each person very differently. But I loved how the ending was left on such a hopeful note when Virginia chose to speak up. This is a debut novel, which it definitely did not feel like in any way. I'm definitely going to be checking out more from this author. All right, now was. we are moving on to our top three of 2023. Coming in at number three is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This follows Violet, who after saving the royal prince Cyrus when they were children, is appointed the court seer. She is tasked with reading the threads of fate in order to determine the past and future. So when Violet sees Cyrus's untimely death, the king asks her to lie about what she's seen. She tells of a bride who will become known once Cyrus returns from his journey, but when he returns with no bride, whispers of a curse start circulating. I had so much fun reading this. I think that it honestly may be one of the best enemies to lovers tropes that I have ever read. We absolutely love a good hate kiss. The sexual tension and chemistry between these two was so well done. It was chef's a kiss. I absolutely loved the banter between those two characters. The amount of betrayal that occurred between the two of them was amazing. I could not stop reading this book. Violet is probably one of my favorite characters I've read before. She is so sarcastic and witty and I love how she told all of her little lies to the court and shaped the world the way that she wanted to and literally nobody was able to tell her that she was wrong. She was just so conniving and impulsive and I could not stop rooting for her. I thought that this was going to be a series or at least a duology but I have not seen the second book or any announcement for it so I'm very disappointed because I need to know how the story goes from the year but I highly highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. It's coming in at number three for me. Next up, coming in at number two, is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I feel like this is on a lot of people's favorite books list. This follows a orc named Viv who decides to settle in a small town where she decides to open a coffee shop. In order to ensure that this plan is successful, she enlists the help of some locals to get the shop up and running, and I absolutely love this. I actually read this when I had COVID, and I think that it was the perfect pick me up for that time in my life. I loved my time reading this. I loved every single character. Thimble is 100% my favorite of everybody in this story. I just thought he was so cute and I loved how he added new pastries to the menu every day. I am a big sucker for the found family trope and I really think that this was so well done in that aspect. This is another slow burn romance. I think that Tandri and Viv were so sweet and I loved watching them care for each other. It was just such a pure and wholesome read. If you haven't picked it up, which I mean everybody has at this point, then I definitely recommend picking it up as soon as possible. It was so cute. And then coming in at number one is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I am obsessed with this book. 
This follows Scarlett, who is a successful professor at the University of Gorman. For the past few years, she has spent her days teaching and her nights murdering men without detection. When people start questioning the growing body count, she decides to insert herself into the investigation in order to ensure that she remains in the loop of what's going on. Meanwhile, a freshman named Carly starts having feelings for her new roommate, Allison Hadley. But then one night, Allison is assaulted and Carly decides to take matters into her own hands. I read Temper by Lane Fargo a few years ago and that ended up on my favorites list of that year, so clearly Lane Fargo is just an author that I really enjoy. I find her writing style so engaging and fast-paced and easy to read. I am an absolute sucker for a revenge plot. Any time I make one of these top books list, revenge plots seem to be a big highlight for me. I loved the dual point of view between Carly and Scarlett and how their stories intertwined. I definitely enjoyed Scarlett more than Carly's timeline. I am personally just a big fan of murderous women who seek revenge, so I ate her chapters up. I just think that Scarlett was such an intriguing character. Like, I understand that she is a literal serial killer, but something about this woman just... I, I can't get enough of her. I need another story with her. I need a TV show. I need a movie. I don't know, but I need more of Scarlett. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, everybody. So those were my top 10 books of 2023. Yes, we are coming to you very late, but like I said, better late than never. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!